Hey, this is BR Tidwell 55. Uh, in this video, kind of along the same theme of uh, transitioning from Windows XP to Linux Mint, uh, I realize that some things that you were able to do in XP, well, let's just face it, are a heck of a lot simpler uh, than uh, the way you do them and do it in Linux. And uh, one of those is file sharing uh, with Windows Home Networking. Now, in an early back in my earlier video series uh, on uh, setting up a XBMC server. Uh, the first video in that series talks about setting up the computer for uh, remote access and I talk about setting up fi uh, Samba file sharing uh, in that video. Uh, you might want to go back uh, and what I'm going to talk about now is how to auto automatically mount those file shares. It's a uh, similar idea in uh, Windows where you could go into uh, My Network Places uh, click on a computer icon and you could see all the file shares under that uh, computer icon and then you could right click on one of those shares and you could and it would give you the option to uh, to mount a network drive and then you did that and then it would appear under my computer as uh, as like a Z drive well I'm going to show you how to do the same thing it's just you're gonna uh, it's just gonna require you to uh, edit a text file but that will give you the same situation. This is what I'm talking about. Like uh, on my on my Linux Mint desktop, there's that network icon. I click on that, and it opens a window that says Windows Network. Open that up, and that's my that's what my work group name. Then I open that up. Yeah, I've got a. I'm a fan of Avatar: The Last Airbender. I've named all my systems on my home network after characters. That's neither here nor there. And then. Uh, Suki, that's my actual XBMC server, and you can see where I've got the shares there. Well, and you can also see that NAS, you see how I have that mounted under uh, under the network on, in the file browser. And purpose well, purpose is to show you how you can do the same thing. There's uh, one piece of software uh, that you'll need. I can't remember if it's installed by default, uh, just in case it's not. Go ahead and open up your terminal. And I'll put these instructions, I'll copy these instructions to the, uh, to the video description, along with a link. You know, give credit where credit's due, where I actually found out how to do this. Uh, you're going to want to install a program called uh, GVFS. And you do that uh, by typing, open a terminal, type sudo apt-get, apt -get, install gvfs-bin. And I've already installed it, it's already the newest version, so it's not going to install anything there. But if it wasn't already installed, it would go out, it would grab the package, and it would install it on your system. Okay, so once you have that little piece of code installed on your system, you can go ahead and close out a terminal. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is open up your home directory. And what you'll want to do is click on view and go ahead and, and check show hidden files because you're going you're gonna to create a script that is going to be hidden and then what you'll want to do uh, once you have that open uh, you can hit file and then create a new document and then empty document and once you have that empty uh, once it creates that uh, empty document it's going to open up I'm just going to show you mine Create that open document, or, or that empty document, then what you'll do is you'll go in and you'll type in GVS, GVFS-mount space SMB colon 
uh, slash slash and then the path to your network share in this case I'm using the IP uh, the IP address you could use the name of the computer I could just as easily replace this with that NAS folder lives on Suki I could just as easily replace this uh, IP address with Suki slash NAS okay once you do that you're gonna save it and you're gonna call it dot share mount dot sh and this is just a stylistic thing that I did I called it capital share capital M O U N T dot sh remember that Linux is case sensitive so the capitalization counts but go ahead and name it dot share mount dot sh and then once you do that right click on that uh, file and go down to properties click on the permissions tab and you'll want to check execute allow executing file as a program I close that and you can test this by clicking on the script and telling it to go ahead and run and then your share will appear over here now one last piece uh, one last thing you need to do uh, to get this to actually automatically mount when you log on is go ahead and open up your uh, system settings and open up startup programs and you can see I already have it here it's and what you'll do is you'll want to add and then when you hit add it's the name will be blank you can call it anything you want I call I call my script share mount and then you'll put in the path to that command which will be slash home slash your username slash dot share mount and the comment is not mandatory uh, you can that's just to give you uh, remind you of what it what it actually does you don't have to put in you can leave that blank or you can put a comment in there then you'll hit save and then you'll close that out and then you'll close that out and once you do that you can log off log back in and your network share will automatically be mounted and you can do this for every uh, shared folder you have on your home network. Uh, if you, in the case of wanting to mount multiple shares, uh, you'll have to write a different script for each one. You know, you know we called the first one dot share mount dot sh. You can call the next one dot share mount one dot sh, and then just increment it up how, however you want to do it, and it'll still work so not quite as easy as mounting a shared drive in Windows but uh, it's not too terribly difficult either so tell me what you think uh, this is BR Tidwell 55 and thank you for watching <laughs>